So this past week, a lot of you guys have DM'd me on Instagram and other social media platforms because you guys were wondering whether or not you should come to Cornell. A lot of you are debating between Cornell and some other school. So this past week was Ivy Day and lots of kids had gotten into Cornell. So that means that lots of you have been DMing me about whether or not you should come to Cornell. You guys probably have millions of questions running through your mind right now. Like, is Cornell as depressing as they say they are? Are the winters there even survivable? Do professors give out A's? How's the food there? And etc. So in this video, I will be addressing all of those questions that you guys had for me. If I was on campus right now, I will be interviewing all my friends in person. But FaceTiming was the next best thing that I could do for you guys because, you know, we're all stuck in quarantine right now. It's kind of hard to go outside and meet people. Many of you guys probably have heard Cornell is like a very tough school. Like people say it's the easiest to get into, but the hardest to stay in. So I definitely agree with that. Most of the time you're going to find yourself studying and especially fall semester, they're trying to weed out all the people who are like passionate about going into pre-vet. And you'll see like some of your friends switch majors or even drop the class. So that's also kind of hard, but you just have to stick through and believe that if this is really what you want to do, no matter if your grades are not good starting off, that you can actually persevere. So some of the experiences at Cornell that I would have never thought that I would have had uh, over the winter break, I did research in the Dominican Republic and just being able to travel. And Cornell has a very good financial aid, like programs and scholarships that you can apply to. So I feel like Cornell really allows students even who don't have the financial income to travel places, they really try to provide them with as many opportunities as possible. So over the three weeks I was in the Dominican Republic, we basically learned how to do research. And we also conducted like a full research and we're actually writing our thesis paper right now. But it's like so pretty. Like that was one of the first things I found out. Like I came to Cornell, I was like, oh my God, it's so pretty. Like the nature is so, I don't know. I'm not really a big nature person myself, but it's just so, it's like beautiful. Like the campus is super nice and the architecture is really nice. I mean, we are the number one architecture school, so. Yeah. If you want a really nice looking like college experience, college campus experience, definitely come here. It's just, it's like exactly what I wanted from like the college campus experience. How do you feel about like the campus being too big or something? I don't know. Could that be a con for you? Okay, yeah, a little bit, but it forces you to like exercise. <laughs> um, so like the first time I like went to Cornell, the first week my legs were so sore for like for, like a month because um, I think my closest class is like a 15 minute walk away, but it depends on what freshman dorm you get. So I'm in low rise six and Chris and I are from the same like dorm and it's so far away so like you if you are walking your classes it takes forever and if you're in the engineering quad which is like at the very very end like i think it takes like 30 minutes sometimes if you walk slowly um but there are buses that you can take that um are like pretty close if you're like a dorm that far away so yeah that's that can be a con and i wish i could walk to class faster because if you wake up late then it's like you're kind of screwed <laughs> now but... that's that's why you get a boost board that's why I got a what? A booster. Okay, Chris is just lazy and he's gonna be obese in like the next month. But. <laughs> oh, wait, what else? Uh, oh, cut, cut. <laughs> Alright, one thing I would like to mention about Cornell is a lot of the clubs are very elitist, I would say. Many of the clubs are have a very are very very selective with the Ivy League pool. So most business friends, so competitive ones, they're except for like five ten percent, and these are all students who are Ivy League students. So they all have compelling resumes and compelling stories about them. So it's just very difficult to break into these clubs unless you know people. And the way to know people is to join other clubs. So you need to get a club to get into a club. So it's kind of difficult. And another big thing that sets Cornell apart from other engineering schools is like the huge support for girls in engineering because um, so far like engineering is still a pretty male dominant field and a lot of girls feel like nationally feel like discouraged to join the field. But and in, personally in my high school, both of my physics class, both like junior and senior year, there were literally only four girls in a 30 people class. And like not that it affected me a lot, but just like felt weird. Um, but when I got to Cornell, I just felt a lot more comfortable and confident because I think Cornell Engineering has a 50-50 gender ratio, which is like more than double the national average. 
so yeah, that just gave me, that was a confidence boost, and I just felt like a lot more like empowered to like try new stuff and explore more fields. So yeah, those are my big, two biggest reasons. So come to Cornell Engineering. I think in my opinion, one of the downsides is definitely like the weather here. I think like from August to like mid March, the weather is definitely not the greatest here. So if you're looking to go somewhere that has good weather, you probably shouldn't come here. But um, on the flip side, while the weather may not be good here, the campus is huge and we have so many dining halls. So if you're someone who gets tired of food easily, um, definitely come here. You'll probably not get tired of the you know, numerous dining halls we have here. There's so much food here that you'll probably not, never end up getting tired. And another thing is, um, even though we have like a really huge campus here, it's very easy to find like a close-knit community. Um, I have like multiple friends, like Chris is one of them, and we, you know, spend a lot of time together. And so, you know, you can always meet new people every day because the campus is big and because there are so many students, but at the same time, you can, um, you know, find a close community to make friends with. The friends that you make at other institutions, like you're going to carry them no matter what. Um, I'm still friends with my friends at UVA, um, and I knew that like, it was I wasn't I wasn't losing something by transferring. I was just adding on to what I already had. Um, Cornell was like the best thing that I could add to myself. Then for maybe like, um, cause you know Cornell compared to other like Ivy Leagues or like other schools, they have the transfer option open for more people. I feel like. So if someone uh, is considering transferring to Cornell, would you say like, hundred percent go for it, or like are there other considerations that you might tell them to uh, think about? Hmm. As as like a big fan of transfer students, I would say go for it. I think the transfer community um, helps you find your feet at Cornell and much faster than like any other freshman or any other community. Um, I think the one thing to be wary about as a transfer student is that you can find yourself missing your friends and like your previous institutions and it's kind of like you have a chip on your shoulder when you come to Cornell like you don't think it can be any better than it was um you're going to find yourself always missing that I want people to steer clear of that I think opening yourself to new opportunities being enthusiastic about the new doors that are being opened for you is really important and how does housing work for transfer students again good question um housing is not yet guaranteed for transfer students but we're getting there around fall 2021 it will be guaranteed um I think the majority of transfer students do get on-campus housing, maybe five-sevenths of transfer students, which is the majority. Um, and also off-campus housing, if you are not guaranteed that um, on-campus housing guarantee, then you can find off-campus housing. It's a little difficult, but people make it work. Reach out to um, upperclassmen, they can really help you out. I also chose Cornell for the motto, any person, any study. I think the fact that Cornell has always like made strides towards inclusion especially back in the day when other colleges would blatantly like discriminate and prohibit certain students from certain studies, whatever. Cornell welcoming everyone is what makes it unique for me. Um, I also feel like Cornell is also extremely flexible with academics and changing majors in most cases. Um, I think people get a little bit scared about the rumors that because Cornell has all these waterfalls and kind of like the suicide rate that kind of has a stigma about it but um Cornell's already made changes to obviously accommodate mental health more and we have a, a lot more resources than we used to and I think it's gotten a lot better and um just the faculty in general and the administration is always accommodating for everyone and trying to listen and understand every student's perspective. So I feel like that might be kind of a stigma, but it's something that we've already improved on. And I'd say what I love about Cornell would be the community and just the people you meet. And um, there's just so many people that share the same interests as you do. and. No matter what you're interested in, you'll find some kind of team or some kind of club that um, will be per like will help you pursue your interests. Uh, for example, um, I'm like Indian American, so I'm in uh, the Society for India Club, and it's just basically like gathering people from the same nationality that um, kind of share the same interests and want to just like spread our culture around campus. I feel like students should come here, but they should also be mindful of like what they're getting themselves into um like i never like i never regretted coming here i'm really happy that i had this opportunity to come to 
an Ivy League institution, especially as a low-income Black female, not everyone has this opportunity. My parents never had this opportunity. So, like, I'm very grateful being here and, like, receiving this education. Like, me, because I'm low-income, like, I'm here on, like, full financial aid. So it's actually really nice, like, not having to worry about, like, the financial aspect of receiving, like, one of the best, you know, uh, one of the best educations, um, like, in the world. I, like, I really like the support here for minority students. Um, like, there's several departments that are, like, constantly reaching out to minority students to, like, help them through their process. Um, specifically, like, first-generation low-income students, but, like, even if you don't fall into that range, like, they, they're they still, like, out there to support you, and, like, I feel like without them, I wouldn't be as successful here at Cornell. So, um, I was choosing between, like, Cornell and UCLA, but I actually have, like, no regrets choosing Cornell, just because I feel like Cornell is, like, the perfect size, because, like, UCLA, a lot of my friends are, like, they feel very small. You just, like, have multiple communities, so, like, you honestly, like, before going to college, I didn't really feel a connection to my culture, because, like, I'm very, I was born in the U.S., and, like, I'm, like, not the most Korean person ever, but um, in college, I found another group through, like, my ethnicity, which is CASA, Korean American Student Association, and, like, you just feel, like, a connection to your culture group, and there's just, like, so many different groups that you can be a part of in Cornell. So, the diversity at Cornell um, is one of the biggest reasons why I chose the school. Coming from a very conservative state, such as Florida, um, it can be very, like, I don't get that, um, world experience that other states and other students um, have gotten within their schools. For example, in my school, there was like a couple of um, Latinx students within my class. So going to um, the summer program, I realized like there's so many people from all around the world. Um, there's so many people from all around the state where I was sitting in a public health course, which is really important to like learn about different like healthcare systems around the world and around, um, you know, like different countries. And I thought it was like really dope to see how like you can sit in a classroom coming from a very conservative state and getting all these different perspectives at a single place in like a single time. Another like small minor con that um, Cornell has and maybe just be specific, specific for me is that back at home I was very involved with my Sarasota community. So going to Cornell, it can be really hard to like bring in like super meaningful change just because the Ithaca community, um, it's really hard to like get involved with them just because there's like, I feel like there's a constant stigma between like Cornell being on the hill and the cup being on the bottom, which like Cornell has been trying to break just because of just the mentality that's been going on. So I feel like getting involved within your Ithaca community can be uh, really helpful. Um, it could be a really good, like good experience, but it just, it's a big challenge for students. And I feel like students should take this challenge um, in order to learn more. Thank you. <laughs>